Hey everybody, Patty Tally Parish here with inkyobsessions.blogspot.com and my buddy Mojo is here helping me. I'm trying to get him on the screen. Mojo, come here. Come here, buddy. Mojo, come. What, come here. What's mommy got? Come here, come here, come here. Look and say hi. Can you say hi? Can you say hi? No? You're not saying hi? Okay. Well, that was oh, perhaps another fail. Here he is. Mojo. There's my puppy. That's a good boy. Are you going to be mommy's puppy tonight? Lay down with mommy. Hmm? Okay. Enough of the animal acts. Let's figure out what we're going to do here. Oh, Lord have mercy. Let's get you straightened out. Ooh, there we go. That's about right, huh? Okay, so tonight I was going to paint some of my inky folders because I need to. Okay. Oh, of course. Are we back running. again? Oh, I, I foresee a lot of interruptions tonight. Mojo is now laying down in his little bed underneath my desk. Um, anyway, I wanted to do some inky folders because I really needed more at work. Um, I probably have 30 some in there that I actually use every day. So if you guys follow my blog, you've seen a lot of pictures of them, I suppose. This is the only one that I happen to have here that I've done. And I just messed up the black gesso by trying to erase some of this stuff. But anyway, I just uh, use layers of spray inks and stencils and gesso. And then I come back in when I'm satisfied with how it looks. And I add some pops of black. I know that's a shocker. Some of my little marks. And then I embellish some of the little spots. Um, outlining them in black. Adding a little white dot here and there. Um, some oil pastels. These are portfolio oil pastels that bring out the color in these little circles. Um, as well as these little parts of these gears that I did here. Um, so uh, I thought I just, since I was going to be doing it anyway, I just roll the film. Um, a lot of this I learned from um, Robin Marie Smith. She was one of the very first online, well actually she was the first online class that I ever took that had anything to do with paper, ink, or gesso, or any of that stuff. Um, I took Diane Reevely's class in person at the Queen's Inc. was my very, very first thing. And then I started to look and I found Robin Marie and I've done several of her online classes and I adore her. I don't know if you guys know who she is, but do look her up. It's Robin, R-O-B-E-N hyphen Marie Smith. She does a lot of really cool stuff. Um, so anyway, let's dive right in. I use heavy duty manila folders, a little heavier than, uh, you know, than the basic ones not that much more expensive and I use a little uh, got this idea from Robin actually a little dish rack kind of a thing or a folder holder as I get them all inky and I want to work on another one I just stack them up in here and let them start to dry a little bit <clears throat> so I work on on multiple uh, pieces at a time but first I start out with a coat of gesso and I don't gesso a solid coat on the entire folder but the best part of it is is gessoed so I just kind of slap it and let her go with as much as I cover up I cover up if I miss a spot I miss a spot not too worried about it because the different you know when it hits just the manila rather than the gesso you'll get a little bit different texture out of some of the you know inks and things that you put on there so it just kind of adds to it I think not being exactly covered and throw slap some on here. I'm just using Liquitex Gesso. I, I, I use Goldens too for different things, but um, the Liquitex, it's kind of runnier. And when I get in here and I start doing layers over top of what I've sprayed there, um, I use my fingers in it. And it just, and sometimes I even tap them in water and then go to the gesso. So it's kind of milky and runny to get more translucent look out of it but that's that's good enough let's see if you can see what's gessoed and what's not see not really a solid coat at all put her in the rack oh I got the wrong rack I have one that's deeper oh well say la vie oh look at me whipping some French on you okay number two I think what I'll do is just do three of these and that should give me enough to work on while the other one's dry and I can hit them with the heat gun if I need to. We 
we were having a thunderstorm here earlier, quite a bit of thunder and lightning. Mojo's all relaxed like, you know, nah, nothing's wrong, no big deal, it's just a storm. Babe, my little female, good lord, she'd climb on top of your head if she could, trying to hide in a closet and trembling and she's so pitiful. I feel sorry for the little rascal. We got one of those thunder shirts, but this one came up kind of quick and we weren't here when it started, so we kind of missed the opportunity for that, saving her with a thunder shirt this time. There's number two. Can you guys see that? Hopefully. And we'll do a third one. Put these other ones out of my way. The class that I took of... Um, of Robin Marie is you gave that gave me the idea of these folders was that she did one I think it was called mixed media mayhem where she actually painted folders like I'm going to do similar to that I mean it's a little different I guess but um, inside and out and then she used the folders as pages um, and made little signatures out of a couple folders and then sewed them into a canvas uh, cover that was also uh, decorated kind of like this. So, and then it was, she had it stitched around the edges, the canvas. She's the reason I bought my sewing machine, which by the way, I don't know if you can see it, it's still over here in the plastic, sitting on my grandmother's old treadle machine. <laughs> um, I don't know how I got off track there with the sewing machine thing, but I got a killer deal on overstock.com. I got a refurbished, uh, what is it? It's a Brother Runway limited edition model for $49. So, but what the hell? What's the worst that can happen? Okay, so there's number three. Going to let those start to dry a minute. And I'm working on, I put some newsprint um, down over top of my, um, my nonstick uh, sheets. So that kind of sucks up all the uh, all the ink that's going to be flying around here shortly. Let's see. There's a couple little damp spots here. So I'm going to hit this with the dryer, the heat gun here, for just a second. Dry a little bit of that up. And then basically what I do is I, I start with some smaller stencils. You don't really have to. Um, you can start with whatever you want. But I um, just put little patches of color, and I try to use um, colors that will allow me to go back over it with another color or water and not blend, so that I can try to not make everything brown. Um, and these, these SEI tumble dyes colors, these spray inks here, they're, um, I think they're actually, well, tumble dye, I guess, they're made for fabric, but... Um, I got these from Robin when she had her website, and they, they're permanent. When you put them on there, they stay the color that they are. So I usually start with a layer of those just to get, and they end up mostly covered with gesso anyway, so I'm not too concerned about the colors at that point. Um, as far as the dominating color theme that I want to put on here. Okay, dry enough. All right, so... Let's see, what do we want to do? Gosh, it's been so long since I did these. I feel like I'm out of me element. So let's do, this is the same one of um, Julie Faith Van Balzer's that I love. This is a six inch one. I think it's called Echoes. And um, let's see, these are probably clogged up too. Watch this, oh, oh mercy. Again, a little bit of prep time wouldn't kill me. Okay, well, that's kind of kind of squirting out of there. I keep my little inky binky here on my lap. So I can blot up any extra if I need to. And that's actually what Robin um, trimmed her canvas cover for that project I was telling you about. She has her, she uses muslin. And um, she um, just cut little strips of that and then trimmed the canvas on all the open edges. And, uh, real, and use little little bits to cut off like an index tab of fabric and kind of stitched it real raw and rough 
on the edge of some of the uh, pages. Very cute. Got to check it out. Okay. Oops, here we go. All right, I'm just going to go spray a little something here. Oops. Oh, not cooperating. Great. Splay a little something there. And then I take the stencil and flip it over. Make nice, nice with my newsprint. Dries my stencil. And then I get that. Ha! Ah, how about that? Let a collage fodder when you get done with this. So um, I'm going to take my paper towel, do a little Diane Reevely roll here to get up some of the overspray. Let's throw some of this lime green in. These need to be shaken. I haven't used these for a while since I've been in my jelly plate craze. My sprayings have suffered the consequences. So, let's see. There we go. A couple of spots. If it blobs, not that big a deal because nobody's ever going to see what I'm putting down there now. We're going to be layers deep in this thing before we uh, before we finish up. So now I'm going to let this dry. That's all I have on there right now. Right? And what I really don't like about the small stencils is I see this white line everywhere. On here it almost looks kind of mosaic, so that I'm not really minding that, but I, I try to be conscious of that as I go along. So here's folder number two with a couple damp spots. Let me hit that with the dryer. And what I normally do is um, when I'm making a set, I use, I don't know, make one like cold colors, one hot colors, um, less chance of making mud. I want to keep those color families together. It just so dries pretty quickly, too. Um, but you know what? I'm going to grab... Hold on. I know. I'm never, never prepared. Grab a couple more of these big ones. Another one of Julie's. I think she's got some of my faves. Oh, and look what I got from Diane Reevely's online store in, the, in the, her shop in the UK. These are, um, oh my God, I forgot his name. <gasps> Ike, hang on, it'll come to me. Oh my gosh, what's his name? He does really cool stuff with the jelly plate. He ends up with like painting. Skinner, Andrew Skinner, is that it? Really cool stuff. Um, ooh, this will be cool on a jelly plate. One of my faves, that's a stencil girl. Oops. Now let's put a little 3D action in there with one of my eye stencils. Mix it up a little bit. All right, that's, that should be good. For demonstration purposes, anyway. Okay. So let's go with this with all these layers of paint on here. Um, yeah, well, we'll see what happens, won't we? Yes, we will. All right, let's do something orange, yellow, and pink on these. Oh, looky there. And as I spray, I kind of like, you know, uh, what do I want to say? You know, kind of, ooh, that's not kind of good. Um, that might be because of all the layers of paint on this one. I use this one a lot. This is one of my favorites. It's called Urban Jungle by Stencil Girl. Love it. But that'll make a funky, cool kind of background. Even though it didn't really show like I wanted it to. But I think it's got part partly to do with this sprayer. Hey, hey. Yeah, see, it's coming out of there kind of thick. Let's try that. Yeah, about the same, but that's okay. Get a little bit down. Ooh, that's a lot of it. A lot of bit, not a little bit. Okay. And let's try... Where's that Andrew Skinner one? I like this one, this big swirly thing. 
I think this is called Tornado, maybe? Something like that. Some kind of storm name. <laughs> so let me use some yellow on this one. Okay, here goes nothing. Boy, I am really like out of my element doing these now. But that's okay. Some getting inky kind of fun. How bad can that be? Now when I paint, when I use my uh, jelly plate, you guys see me that I don't wash my stencils off. It's just, it would, I'd do that, I'd be doing that like forever if I did that on my jelly plate the way I burn through stencils. But um, with the inks, they're so coated and wet and they, you know, if you throw them in a pile while you're working, those colors blend and you end up with blobs of brown. Some people really like that look. I'm not one of those people. I like, if I'm spraying yellow, I want her to be yellow. So, that's where we are with this one. Just partially covered, leaving a lot of white space. And my last one that I just sewed, a little heat gun. This one has a couple thicker spots on it. I believe that's called texture. Yep, there we go. Good enough. Let's try one of my faves, my 3D. Um, and let's do one of my favorite colors with this hot pink. I hope it sprays. Yoo-hoo, there we go. And see this overspray here? I don't like that part either. But that's going to go away with gesso. Whatever you don't like, gesso is your friend to make it go bye byes. All right. It's good. Flip it down here. A little paper towel roll to get the excess off of there. And this one always, it looks really bright when you put it on. And then when you mop up the excess, you get a, um, it's still a bright pink, but it's kind of a bright, pastel pink if that makes sense. My paper's getting nice and inky. Ooh, that's pretty where they're orange and the pink mixed. Kind of a hot coral color. And let me throw something else on there. Something contrasting. Let's do this. And let's go with the blue. Kind of get a purple mix when it blends a little bit, maybe. Well, not with these two, but on future layers. Oops. Hello. Mojo, what's the matter, honey? Mojo has a terrible itch. We shampooed him, which seemed to help some, but Dave's out now getting a couple things, and one of the things is some Benadryl spray from a little boy. I don't want to give them anything oral. I hate to give them medicine if they don't need medicine. Um, okay, so there's where we are with that one. Now we're going to go back around again. Okay, back to the first one. And now I'm going to cover some of this stuff up with gesso. Um, don't have it. Just have a little bit in there, add some more. And here's where I just get in and use my fingers. And I'll start covering up like the overspray parts, like I said I wasn't crazy about. Like these kind of oversprays here, where you can see this frame. That's what I'm going to, that's what my eye's looking to cover. And if anything's like too, uh, too bold and too um, framed, I just go over it with some gesso with my fingers and 
it goes away. You can still see a little bit of it, bit of it behind the gesso because it's going to, I'll show you when it dries, of course, but um, really gives it a depth. Some of the ones that I've done, um, are they just look so, look like you're looking into a one of those infinity pools or something where you just see bits underneath um, that you can make out. There's a number underneath of there, or is that a circle? And then on top, of course, it's real vivid where you, um, and sometimes like this big spot right here, I might just knock a little bit out of the center of that just to break it up a little bit. But as you can see, these paints, these sprays, the gesso stays white. They're not, it's not changing the gesso to whatever color it is and, and reactivating it again. Some of the sprays will do that. So that's what you have to kind of learn. And it's a little tricky. I don't, I don't even know if I remember all of the little tricks, but as we go through, we'll see what to do. My memory is shot. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I still have some bits showing. I have some not showing that will be, you know, a little translucent by the time this dries. So I'm going to whip that in the rack and go to this one. And on this one, uh, some of this looks a little in need of gesso. And this big plop right there, that big blob where it all kind of ran together. Looks kind of cool that it swirled though. Oh, now see, this is, that's, Ooh, look, that one's turning yellow. But this yellow, maybe it's not wasn't as dry. Oh, that's what it is. I can see it underneath. Okay, we'll wait till that dries and I'll come back and hit it with some more. So I don't have smears of yellow. Could work in my favor, but we'll see. Um, I think that's what it is. I think this one didn't dry as much. Oh, what do you know? Another fail on camera. Yep, because look, the orange one is, is doing that. And these are all the SEIs that should act the same. So we'll just have to dry this a little bit more. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave this in the tray, move to this one, dry this one. A little bit, it's just a tiny bit damp. Both that yellow and the orange paint, though, did go on kind of thick. So that probably added to the mayhem. <laughs> and one thing I want to, I try to consider, and I learned it the hard way, as I was doing these, I just. I didn't think about the orientation of the folder and how I was going to use it. So, of course, the folder folds, folds like this, and here's the tab, and you'd open it like this, but they're in the rack at work like this. So some of the designs I put this way, like I could see them this way, but they're sideways in the rack. So you want to consider what's going to be your front and your back and how you're going to have the folder visible so that you're oriented right. I hear babe up there. That means her daddy's home. So we're going to have another interruption. So let me go through here and see this is staying white. That's what it was. That other one wasn't dry. So I'm here, hon. I'm recording. I'm here. I'm recording. So I'm just going to go over little bits of this. You guys need help? break up some of this pattern a little bit. Hello. Did you get everything? Uh, yes, and I got a couple extra things, too. Oh, good. Imagine this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I went to sink the food book. Why don't you stop your recording and get some Yeah, I'm going to have to. Hang on, guys. Call from... Stop it.